Hey, what's up? This is JR Noble, and today we're going to take a look at the simpler instrument inside of Ableton. The simpler instrument comes with any version of Ableton, the light, the light version, the standard version, and the sweet version. So you'll have access to this instrument, and you'll be able to make use of this video. Now, if you're not familiar with the simpler instrument, it's basically just a sampler. Ableton offers a sampler instrument, but you can only get access to it if you have the sweet version. The biggest difference between Ableton's sampler instrument and the simpler instrument is that the sampler allows you to load up multiple samples and manipulate them at the same time, whereas the simpler instrument only allows you to load one sample at a time. Even though you can only use one sample at a time in the simpler, it's still actually a really extremely powerful tool. And then over the next few videos, I'm gonna show you just how powerful it is. We're gonna take one sample, load it into the simpler, and I'm gonna show you how you can create three entirely different sounds using just the simpler. I'm also going to show you some basic and intermediate and advanced ways of using the simpler instrument. The sample that we're going to be using for these videos is this saxophone sample and it's a C sharp. I'll make this available so you can actually download this and use it and follow along if you'd like too. So we're going to go back to the simpler instrument and we're going to just drag and drop the sample into the instrument. Now if you take a look at these envelope features, you can change some of the ways that you manipulate the sound just by changing the attack, decay, decay, sustain, and release. So if I turn this release all the way up and I just tap the note on my keyboard, it'll play the entire sample. If I turn it all the way down and just tap the note, you see it barely plays it. So I have to hold it down in order to actually play the whole sample. And I can even change that too by taking down the sustain. So you can see as I hold down the note, it'll play through this whole thing, but you won't hear it the whole time because the sustain's different. Now I can also take that up, take the release up, and then I can change the attack. So it'll get a slower attack. as opposed to a really fast attack. All right, so that's just some of the envelope features. What we're actually gonna make use of for this video is more of the loop feature. So we're gonna move this end point and we're gonna turn on the loop. So now, if I had this loop on, if I didn't have this loop on and I hit the release, even though it's turned all the way up, you see it stops because it's only gonna play till the end of the sample. Now if I turn on the loop and I play the release, so that's just tapping the, the note and it allows to play through the loop continuously for a while. Now it sounds kind of choppy, so what we want to do is we're going to change that and we're going to turn on this snap and we're going to turn up the start time to about 40 seconds or so. Now if I play this note, it's not going to sound so choppy. So we'll zoom in so you can see this. And you can play with the fades too, you can crossfade it, but it, what I've found for this particular sample is that it still sounds kind of choppy, so you can listen. So you see it sounds less choppy when I don't use the fade. All right, so that's creating our own instrument using just one sample with the envelopes and the looping feature but we're not quite done yet. So what we want to do is we want to tune this so that way we can play it in this song and not have to guess which notes are which or if we're playing the right note. So if we go to Ableton's audio effects and we grab the tuner, put that over there. Now this is a C sharp. So if I play C on this keyboard, because what it does is it drops this, uh, this sample will always play from C3 on your on your keyboard. So if I play the C3 or the middle C on my keyboard, it'll it should essentially be a C, but the fact that we used a C sharp sample, it should show up as a C sharp here in the tuner. Take that release down a little bit. So you can see that it's a C sharp, so we just have to change it and pitch it down a little bit so that way it gets to be a C. So we're gonna take it and transpose it down a semitone, but it's not quite gonna be inside of the bubble yet. We want it to be dead center so that way it's a C. 
So you can see it's closer, It's now it's a C, but it's not quite in the bubble. So we're gonna mess with this detune and get it to where it's inside of that little bubble, and then our instrument will be uh, tuned. Close enough. All right, so we have our instrument tuned now. So if we play a C, it's a C, and we can play it in with the rest of the song, and it's actually gonna sound good. One other thing I wanna mention is that the velocity button right here. So if we change the velocity to zero, it doesn't matter how loud or soft I play this note on my keyboard, it's always gonna play at the same volume. I can adjust the volume and I can make it louder, but then it's always gonna always play at that same level and it's gonna sound kind of robotic if you try to put it in your song. So if you change this velocity and you make it more sensitive to how loud or soft you, or how hard you hit the key, then it's going to adjust how loud or quiet you play the note as you're playing it which is helpful for making it sound a little bit more realistic and getting, giving a better performance so that's the the volume and the velocity and then also the envelopes and the looping feature and then I'm gonna give you one extra little thing it's a little bit more advanced just for this uh, for this video okay so if we go over to this track it's the same exact thing we have the saxophone loop right here I have the same settings and all I did was I added uh, some saturation some EQing and compression compression and I'll turn off these effects for now just so you can hear the sample and then I have this loop right here and I'll play this loop so you can hear what it sounds like So it's playing the instrument that we created. Now we're going to get a little bit more advanced with it. We're going to throw an arpeggiator on this. And if we turn this off and turn these down, so I'll change some of these settings here. So it's basically we have it playing 16th notes. So if I play this same MIDI clip that we played before, it'll sound a little bit different. So that starts to give it uh, a different kind of feel than just playing the straight notes. Uh, but I want to make it a little bit more funky. So I, what I did was I'll set it to note. I'm going to turn up the steps a couple steps. So that's going to just play it, the notes up and down a couple octaves using this up style. And then I'm going to turn up the repeats to two. And basically now it's going to sound different than what you just heard. So now it's not just playing straight 16th notes the entire time, and it actually breaks it up and makes it sound a little bit different, and I think it sounds a little, a little more funky, a little bit more cool. And then we can add that into the track that we're working on here. The only other thing is, now that we've made it a little bit fatter with the saturation, we've EQ'd it out a little bit to kind of give it some room to live inside of the, the song that we're messing with, and we compress it a bit, we want to give it a space to live in, so we... So what I did was I added a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb right on it. And now it's going to sound more like this. So now if we listen to that in context with the whole song. So that's the little arpeggiated riff that we created with this track. So just to recap, we took a sample, we placed it inside of the simpler instrument, we adjusted the envelopes, we set a loop, uh, we adjusted the velocity of it, and then we tuned the instrument, so now it's playing in key with everything. Uh, we did a little bit of processing on it, and then we added, it, added an arpeggiator to the front of it, so we get it to sound the way it sounds now in this track. Now in the next video, we're gonna take this same MIDI pattern that we created, and we're gonna create an entirely new sound using the same sampler with the same sample, and but we're just gonna adjust some of the different settings and play with some of the different features inside of the sampler to create a new sound and add that to our loop. Once again, my name is JR Noble. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching this on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're there, then also you can hop on over to my website at jrnoble.co if you want to get more helpful information like this. And make sure you check out part two of this video where we're going to go a little bit deeper into using a simpler instrument.